man existed in Mesoamerican mythology and his name was Kamazots. As social media is abuzz with who might be cast in the next Batman movie with concerns that some of the candidates might not be menacing enough to fill those big black boots, it might be time to look again at one of the Bat figures that featured as an imposing power in Mesoamerican mythology, and that was Kamazots. This is a, a design by Mexican designer Kimbal. Kamazots, meaning death bat, in the Kich Mayan language of Guatemala, originated deep in Mesoamerican mythology as a dangerous cave dwelling bat creature. A cult following for the creature began amongst the Zapotec Indians of Oaxaca, Mexico, and the figure was later adopted into the pantheon of Mayan Kich tribe, and the legends of the bat god were later recorded in Mayan literature. Bats are considered to be menacing creatures in many cultures. They are nocturnal and thus associated with the night, which is also often associated with death, and many common species also have a relatively bizarre appearance, which makes them all the more off-putting for humans. It does not help that there is a species that actually sucks blood, the vampire bat, Desmodus rotundus. In the Maya culture, the bat god Kamazots is linked to death, and uh, Kamazos is also the name of a monstrous creature which inhabited a cave called the House of Bats in the Popol Vuh. Most scholars, scholars believe that Kamazos was inspired by the common vampire bat. Others have suggested it was based on a giant vampire bat that probably went extinct sometime during the Pleistocene or Holocene periods. The monster bat, Popol Vuh, an ancient Mayan mythological text, uh, Zozilaha was the name of the cave inhabited by Kamazots. He was a monster with a roughly humanoid body, the head of a bat, and a nose that resembled a flint knife. And the monster was said to attack victims by the neck and decapitate them in the Popol Vuh. In the Mayan mythology, recorded that this creature was the Maya hero, decapitated the Maya hero Hunahpu. Kamazos is also one of the four animal demons responsible for wiping out mankind during the age of the first sun, supposedly. This is all according to Mayan culture. And bat-like demons and monsters common in South America and Central America. Another example of such story is the Conchon, Chonchon in Peru and Chile, which is thought to be created when a sorcerer known as Kaku performed magical rites causing his severed head to sprout again, giant ears and talons at death, and the giant ears becoming wings, etc. This ubiquity of giant bat monster legend leads many archaeologists to propose that the monsters have a basis in encounters with real animals such as a vampire bat. And the vampire bat is favored because of its historical association with bloodletting and sacrifice. And it's possible, however, that legends could be derived from a giant bat that was present during the Pleistocene or early Holocene, one which may still exist today. The, jam the giant vampire bats in 1988, a fossil of a vampire bat was discovered in the Mongus province of Venezuela. The bat was larger than the modern day vampire bat by 25% and was dubbed as Modus Draculae. It's more popularly known as a giant vampire bat. Sites containing examples of, of it have been found in the Yucatan, Belize, northern Brazil, and Venezuela. In the year 2000, a tooth from the uh, Dracula vampire bat was found in Argentina, and much farther south of the modern range of the Desmodus genus. It's difficult to date exactly when this Desmodus Dracula went extinct, extinct, if it went extinct at all. All of the sites have been dated so far to be between late Pleistocene and late Holocene. The Dracula sightings, the, in addition to the evidence, there have been mysterious sightings of giant bats or bat-like creatures, and one of the earliest sightings dating to 1947 when Harrison claimed to have seen several large flying creatures which were described as giant bats, though some people also claimed they were also living pterosaurs. In early 1950s, Brazilian couple claimed they encountered a bat-like creature in the same valley as the Dracula uh, giant vampire bat were discovered in Brazil, and another incident occurred in 1975 when an outbreak of animal mutilations hit Peru, uh, hit Puerto Rico. 
A farmer said that he was repeatedly attacked by two gray bird-like creatures. These creatures were also seen by others throughout the mutilation outbreak. Another Saudi occurred mid-1970s in Texas when a farmer asserted that he had encountered bald bat or pterosaur-like creatures with short beaks and gorilla-like faces. Three toed prints of this creature were also said to have been found. Did this giant Dracula bat inspire the story of Kamazos? The common vampire bat, Rotundus, has an 8 inch wingspan, and the Dracula was 25% larger. It would have required more blood, probably would have attacked larger animals as well, and possibly even humans. It's uncountable that an attack by a rare giant bat would be would give rise to legends of supernatural monsters. And despite the tantalizing fossil evidence and the strange stories about encounters with giant bats, there isn't any indisputable evidence at the moment that the Dracula giant vampire bat was common enough to be encountered by ancient inhabitants of South America and Central America on a regular basis, or that the giant vampire bat is still alive today and could thus be the creature reported in giant bat sightings. Nonetheless, the fact that the fossil evidence suggests that the Dracula vampire bat may have coexisted with humans for thousands of years in the Americas and the ubiquitous legends of bat-like monsters all over South and Central America does make it a plausible connection. This was originally from Ancient Origins, published here under Creative Commons on Collective Spark by Steve McCambly. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.